In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to improve the performance of all of the computers in your household with about a $30 uh, solution. Now, what is this $30 upgrade? Well, it starts actually with a Raspberry Pi. Now, this is my older Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I think is what it is, but uh, any Raspberry Pi will actually work for this solution. And I'm gonna actually use a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which with a 16 gigabyte SD card and with a case and with a power adapter and all that included is a grand total of about $32 on Amazon shipped with the Canna kit, which is the one I'm gonna be going through. Um, now, with this Raspberry Pi Zero, I'm going to install essentially a DNS filter called PiHole. And PiHole actually takes and, and sort of uh, takes all the requests from your household as they go through out to the internet and it bounces it off of its DNS um, server and its blacklist and whitelist for which different connections should go through or not, which means you open up the web browser, it tries to make a bunch of different connections out to the internet to download resources. And some of those resources are actually advertisements, their tracking codes, their, their cookies, etc., that are trying to load in onto your web browser. Older machines get bogged down with this. The older CPUs, the memory, right? We know how much memory that Chrome can take up, for example. The more that you cut down on these requests, the faster your device is going to load and the better the experience is gonna be when you're browsing through a website. So essentially, we should see a performance improvement by just blocking a bunch of ads. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and walk through uh, the start to finish of getting a Raspberry Pi Zero W uh, up and running. Uh, very easy to do uh, without even ever having to plug it into a monitor or a keyboard. So let's go ahead and get started with that process. So overview of everything that comes with the kit that I purchased. You get, of course, the SD card. You'll want to actually get that all set up before you install it. It does come with pre-installed software, but we're going to do PiHole instead. Um, the little heat sink, just attach that to the top of the chip. I don't even think it needs it, but hey, why not? It's included. And then of course you get multiple different versions of the case that can accept different sort of input output options. I'm just gonna use the uh, sort of straightforward flat top case. The whole thing is, I mean, it's, it's tiny. It could definitely fit in your pocket. You could carry it around with you. It just snaps into place, no need to glue or anything. And then you can uh, basically start the process of getting it hooked into um, some power. Now power delivery wise, it just takes a micro USB and it, no joke, the power requirement is so low it can be charged off anything or, or powered off of anything. So I'm just going to plug it straight into my router, which has a USB plug-in. Uh, of course, if you needed HDMI out, there is a converter that comes with this as well. So mini HDMI to HDMI, uh, but I'm not even going to be using that here. I'm going to actually use a couple files to set up the Raspberry Pi so that it just connects to Wi-Fi automatically on startup. So there you go. That is a full breakdown of the kit. So now grab your SD card and we're gonna actually use a, in this case, micro SD, just converter. You can use anything that you can to get it plugged into another machine so you can configure it all. Now, configuration wise, go out to the Raspberry Pi website and download the light version of Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and use Belina Etcher to take that ISO file that you've downloaded from raspberrypi.org um, uh, and write it to that once again, to that SD card that came in the kit. All right, the next step is to actually take this now completed SD card of Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm gonna open up Terminal and create just a blank file called SSH on the desktop of my computer, and then just take that SSH blank file and drop it into that SD card right in the root folder. That gives you SSH access right out of the box. The next file we're gonna create, same process. Go ahead and touch a file that actually uh, you can use to configure Wi-Fi. So I'll of course put these commands within the description of the video itself, but this little configuration file, uh, you're gonna go ahead and open that up in a text editor and paste in your configuration. So I'm not gonna of course show you uh, my Wi-Fi configuration here, uh, just in case you're in the area. Um, you can use the guest network, right? Uh, but in this case, what you do is, is drop in um, the configuration file and then on startup. So once you turn on it and give power to the Raspberry Pi for the first time, it's going to not only enable SSH from that file that you put in there, but it also will take this configuration file and load it into the Wi-Fi settings. So now your Raspberry Pi Zero W, which has Wi-Fi on it, will connect automatically to your Wi-Fi for your 
um, for your router. And at this point, get everything put together and plug in your Raspberry Pi. You'll notice here it's pulling uh, on, on like high load, 0.1 amps at 5 volts and 0.08 on sort of a regular usage. That is a half a watt power. A half a watt, right? I think my laptop pulls down 50 to 70, so pretty good power usage. Go into your router and find and search for Raspberry Pi and look for the IP address of your newly set up Raspberry Pi. Uh, go ahead and use the username and password pi at the IP to SSH in from your Mac or terminal uh, putty on your Windows machine, for example. And the password is Raspberry Pi. Pi, I do believe. Check out the raspberrypi.org uh, website for all the configuration options. And you'll want to go through the setup, the default setup. So just check out the instructions there. Uh, it'll sort of walk through how to configure your Pi for your locale and everything else. The uh, additional step that I went through was to change my locale settings. So changed it to US uh, English rather than UK English. But that was pretty much it. Uh, Pi-hole is going to have its own sort of setup and configuration, so you don't have to do too much here. One additional step that I did go through was to actually change and, and turn off the HDMI port on my machine. It actually reduces the power draw a little bit further as well. So um, it's an optional bit. You can also turn off the little green light that tells you that it's on for a little bit of power savings. I didn't go that far. HDMI was at least a moderately noticeable difference in the power usage, and I'm not using it all anyways. So you can go ahead and turn that off. Uh, there's a couple online instructions on how to do that, but basically you run a command uh, on startup for your machine. So you just edit a file, drop in the code, and now on every single boot, HDMI is off. Final piece, actually get pi-hole installed. sudo su and then run this nifty pi-hole command, which of course you can find on the pi-hole website. And what it's gonna do is just step you through sort of the installation process and then into a configuration screen. The configuration big change that I made was uh, you know, selecting Cloudflare as my DNS. You know, any of them will work, right? You can actually select multiple within the UI later, so don't stress about this piece. And then also I turn off logging. The, the logging should be fine now, but a couple years ago when PyHole was first released, the logging, just the storage to the SD card could wear out smaller SD cards. So, you know, I just turn it off and I don't need extensive logging. You still get log files, just not extensive logging. Uh, beyond that, should be fairly straightforward to just click, click, click. Don't stress about it too much because you can always change these settings at a later time. The big one, of course, remember logging, DNS, but then also um, static IP, and it should automatically walk you through that. Configuration is complete. You get your little splash page telling your IP again. Open up a browser and put that IP into the browser slash admin. The other option is pi.hole slash admin, which uh, depending on, you'll want to put HTTP uh, in front of it so that the browser knows to go to a local uh, IP rather than the internet. But now you've got your pi-hole configuration and admin console, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can look up the default password within the sort of output of terminal as it scrolled by. Uh, one of your first steps, of course, go in and change the default password just basic security stuff here. Um, um, but you'll see it sort of in the terminal. I just copy paste it in, go in and start configuring my Pi hole, um, which we're getting pretty close here, right? Now we wanna go ahead and go back into our, um, back into our router and tell it, you know, this, this IP address, 192.168.144 or whatever it is for you uh, and your machine is gonna be our new primary DNS lookup. And that makes all of the DNS lookups for your internet traffic go off the pi hole now. All right, now we can actually start to test this out. You can see there's already some requests bouncing through the pi hole. 6% of all queries have been blocked, but it's very low amount of queries now. But uh, we'll go ahead and jump over and do a live test uh, out there on the internet and see if some ads are getting blocked. Now it's not going to be perfect right out of the box, but it does a really good job of blocking a ton of ads and tracking code and everything else. So let's go ahead and bounce off a couple different URLs here and see how it plays out. News sites are pretty intense when it comes to advertising, tracking, and everything else. So I opened up news.google and we'll jump out to just whatever URLs are here right at the top. Um, it's pretty apparent fairly quickly 
and you can actually see here as I scroll down, there's a couple ads that are just not loading in. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. There's another ad that's blocked, another ad. Jump over to a couple other websites, you'll notice big, big portions of the page are now completely missing, and that's exactly what you want to see. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is run a little bit of a test. Does the pie hole improve the experience that you have when you're browsing on the web? I've got my old 2007 iMac here, completely stock except for three gigabytes of memory rather than two. Um, out of the box, Core 2 Duo with the spinning mechanical hard drive. I'm using Brave Browser because I believe that Google Chrome, uh, even with the pie hole, will try to make sure that Google's ads still make it. Um, yeah, they, they, I'm pretty sure that they do something weird like that. Uh, additionally, I'm going to be recording the network performance so that we can sort of see what happens there. I'll use uh, QuickTime to record my screen so you don't have to try and view it through this video. Uh, I'm also going to use Google's News to find some different news articles and websites out there that have pretty heavy uh, tracking analytics and, of course, um, advertising. Uh, and we'll just sort of see, does this improve the experience on this older iMac? Not only from a uh, sort of my opinion, but also um, within the actual requests themselves. Now in this test, I'm gonna just inspect the page and see how many seconds it takes for the browser to recognize that the page has been fully loaded. I'm gonna do three different tests here. One with just everything turned off one with um, just the pie hole blocking traffic, and then another test with both Brave's built-in ad blocker as well as pie hole turned on just to see the extreme mode. And uh, the results are actually quite surprising. But I'll go ahead and fast forward through a bit of this just so you see you know, my testing here. It's nothing extensive, right? This isn't completely scientific, but I just wanted to get a quick pulse. So. This is something you guys can play around with as well. I find that overall, it's just the experience of blocking some of these trackers and ads and uh, everything else that gets loaded in and continues to load once the page is on. It just, it's, uh, yeah, the results will speak for themselves. So I ran this three different times and then took an average. You'll see that with no blocking on, we're getting around 30 seconds on average page load time. When I actually turned on the pie hole, we cut that almost in half, down to around 17 seconds on average. And then with pie hole plus Brave Shield, so Brave has its own built-in ad blocking, we get down under 10 seconds for a page load, which is crazy. Looking at this from more of like a time to load as a percentage, saying that no blocking is 100%, uh, sort of the default here. With the pie hole on, you're down to almost half the time to load a web page, and this is, incredibly much better experience, especially on an older device like I was using my 2007 iMac because it just makes things feel smoother. The page is ready to be scrolled faster without lumping around, but it got even better with Brave and Shields uh, turned on along with the pie hole. So yeah, it, it cut that down again almost in half. So we're, we're down to like 30% of the total time of just no blocking at all by leveraging Brave plus the pie hole. Really impressive results here. And then after messing around, I can jump into the Pi Hole console and get a quick report of how many ads have actually been blocked, which, uh, which sites are actually showing up most frequently, right? You'll notice, of course, uh, the big ones always show up at the top. You've got Amazon, Google, Facebook, etc. right there at the top. So no big surprise on that side of things, but it's just sort of fun to know that you um, are, you know, you're not imagining this difference, this performance increase just across uh, all of your different devices within the household. This includes your mobile devices, which are harder to get ad blockers on. So conclusion here, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this walkthrough of how to make any machine in your household just have a better experience, right? Less requests out to the internet means it's going to be faster, right? Uh, less advertisements popping in and playing and showing up and sucking down the resources of your device could mean better battery life, could mean just a smoother experience on your device, as well as easier to understand what is and what isn't something that you're supposed to be looking at. Now, I know that we've all gotten really good at ignoring ads, but this is a way to make sure that the ads are gone. Uh, I really do like the pie hole solution. Uh, I like that it makes just using the internet less, I don't know, 
uh, less cluttered in your brain. <laughs> Long story short, um, as you can see here, a little bit of statistics over the last about 24 hours uh, within my house, about 12% of all web traffic has been identified as some sort of a tracking ad, etc. And just yeah, basically the request has been canceled. So that's great, right? This means that there's a ton of different ads that now, you know, my kids, uh, my family, anybody who comes over uses the guest network just will not see anybody connected to my network, which includes me, of course, will not see these advertisements. Now, I will say in some cases, you're gonna need to disable Pie Hole for a period of time. And you do have a very simple way to jump in and turn that off for a period of time so that if you need to make sure that some sort of a site isn't breaking because of Pi Hole, because it can break some sites, right? Um, you can go ahead and confirm that. Usually it takes a couple seconds for it to, to work itself out, but you just turn it off, check and see, and then you can turn it back on. Um, there's a lot of functionality here. It's a great solution. The little Raspberry Pi Zero takes no power and it's very easy to set up. They're just great little machines and it can run something like this with ease. And Hope you enjoyed. Like or subscribe. Have a good one.